Joseph Lowe, are prosecutors playing dirty here? You know what? Normally I bite on that. And boy, I, I love to bite on it. But I got to say this. Who proved that the prosecutors did it? I mean, I've heard the accusation, but I haven't seen the facts that showed that they, in fact, are the ones who did it. Deductive so, reasoning. Deductive reasoning. Yeah, just, a, a, small, a small circle of people knew about it, and, and apparently they, it wasn't the feds and it wasn't uh, Chauvin's team, which leaves just, I guess, the state, right? There's a lot of people in the background who'll get to see these kinds of things that aren't uh, involved with the negotiations, but they're definitely involved with the information. And yes, they know they're supposed to keep it quiet, but sometimes they don't. And he, last thing I want to say is like, look, prosecutors know that if they do something like this on this case, with this kind of national attention, someone's going to get in some trouble. And so although I love to beat up on prosecutors and the government, I'm not willing to do it until I see a little bit more. All right. Quentin Washington, you are the judge right now. <laughs> Tutau wants to have a hearing, wants to bring in the attorney general of Minnesota, wants to bring in the rest of the lead attorneys for the prosecution on this. Mm -hmm. Do you have that hearing? Do you try to figure out who the leaker is? There will be a hearing. But here's the thing, Vinny. Everybody knows that the most non-secretive place in a trial is the courthouse. And so if you're set up to step outside and you're about to have a press conference to announce a plea deal, then that means everybody that's in the room where you're coming out of knew what was happening. That's camera reporters. That's people that work for the state. That's people that the state doesn't have control over. That's people that are in the building. Like, there's a ton of people that would have had access to that information if they were about to step outside and announce that at their press conference. And when that changed because the attorney general at that time decided to pull the, you know, decided to pull the deal, then at that point, they can't be shown. It would be very difficult to show that they're acting in bad faith and trying to leak this information for the detriment of the defendant. All right. Uh, Anna, so I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to fix this. Because March 8th is the trial. This judge has, has done a lot of things to set it up so this trial can happen. Is there a way to cure this, as we say in the law? You know, the judge is going to have a difficult decision to make here, Vinny, because I, I don't think the judge is just going to outright dismiss all the charges with prejudice. I don't see that happening. And even if the judge were to have a hearing, who is going to admit on the record that they were the source of the leak. No one is going to do that. So the judge could possibly... What if you put him under it. oath, Anna? What if you put him under yeah. oath? <laughs> and, and I guess he could, but we all know that witnesses who even testify under oath don't always tell the truth. So even if he relies upon that, Vinny, the argument is, what is he left to do here? Can he reiterate the previous gag order that, okay, people can't talk about this case? Or is he going to say, we're going forward. I know that this is a situation where other people may have heard about it, but this is what voir dire is for. This is what jury selection is about. And I believe that they've already set aside maybe three weeks for jury selection. So I think that's what the judge is going to have to do. I don't think this case is going to get continued. And let me just, if I can say this, Vinny, one of the things that I think also is important to note, as Ms. Young was saying, you, it's going to be difficult to show that the state had control over people who could have been the potential leakers. Right. The prosecutors knew the deal, but that doesn't mean that the prosecutors have responsibility for everybody else that may have had, as Joseph said, the information about the deal. And that's where they're going to run into problems. And I can fix this whole thing. Go ahead. Easy. Oh, now the attorney general, since they're the fool who messed it all up by doing what they did, you know, they're right involved in the prosecution. Now I should have to extend that same deal to the man even though it's probably going to cause an enormous number of riots throughout the country. But because politics got involved, as usual, now you've screwed up what was a beautiful prosecution and made the thing a complete mess. So make the attorney general get on the TV now and explain why that messed it all up. And now you have to give that deal to the man who's going to take it, and that's the end of it because they screwed it up. All right. Um, Anna, at this point, do you think both sides would, ag would agree to that deal? Do you, th do you think Chauvin would take that deal at this point? 
You know, I don't know. That's a tough call because 10 years for a crime like this, I mean, you could understand why Chauvin was thinking about that. But what's yeah. ironic, Vinny, is that <laughs> the third degree murder charge that he was willing to plead to got kicked. The judge ended up kicking mm -hmm. it, saying that there was no probable cause for it. So again, you're, you're probably thinking to yourself, all right, well, what's left? Second degree murder and second degree manslaughter. Well, second degree murder, as we all know, is a lot more difficult to prove for the prosecution than the third degree murder. So is Chauvin going to sit there and say, well, I'll just go for the third degree murder, even though the judge said there was no probable cause for it. So I think there's going to be a big discussion in terms of whether he even considers taking that deal, or at this point, is it too late? And let's just go to trial. All right, any chance, uh, uh, Judge, uh, that this could happen, that Joseph Lowe could step in, fix the whole thing, and then make the trial go away? Well, if the Attorney General decides to offer a plea deal, but which, the thing Which is one that, now? Wh which one? Well, the... The United, it would have to be the United States Attorney General. Gotcha. So the the person who is not confirmed yet would have to be, would have to make a would have to make a charging decision in this that would get relayed down to the state. All right. Let me be clear. Yes. I'm not willing to fix it because that means I'd have to represent him, and I'm not going to do it. Hell no. <laughs>